Hello friends, it is me yet again. So, uh, yeah, today I'd like to talk about um, my uh, latest, um, <clears throat> latest homo, or unipolar motor, and uh, yeah, um, here's the latest design. It's not really, uh, not really that different from my previous uh, versions. I shrunk the disc size down to uh, perfectly match the size of the magnet. I'm using a three-inch diameter magnet. This one here is um, identical to the one that is inside of um, this aluminum, uh, you know, skeleton type thing, enclosure. And um, yeah, uh, the main difference really is just um, that I cut these, um, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, I cut these um, curves in the, uh, in the disc. Um, you know, you might recognize the pattern. It's the uh, standing wave lotus pattern or um, the golden uh, mean spiral. And it's actually uh, Nikola Tesla's uh, design. Yeah. So, what I'd like to talk about is um, the details of uh, the homopolar motor or unipolar or monopolar motor, whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, in 19, or, uh, 1831, uh, Michael Faraday discovered something uh, called the Faraday Paradox, in which uh, he found that... Um, he found that if you spin a copper disc um, over a magnet like what I've done here, um, a voltage is created, uh, you know, between the edge of the disc and the axis of it. It's a generator uh, when you spin it like this, and uh, yeah, he discovered that um, if you, uh, what was it now? Um, yeah, if you hold the disc steady and spin the magnet, uh, then no voltage is created in the disc. Yet if you, uh, you know, spin the disc, uh, then a voltage is created. So what he was able to, uh, to figure out is that um, the magnetic field that is created by the magnet is uh, fixed in uh, space, independent of... Uh, the material that creates or holds the magnetic field, which would normally be iron or neodymium. So, um, you know, it's kind of an interesting phenomenon in and of itself. The field is independent of the material that holds it. And, uh, you know, Faraday proved that, and that is documented on uh, the internet. And then uh, later on, uh, Nikola Tesla came on the scene, and in um, 1891, uh, he came up with this design, uh, which you see here, which um, which I tested, and uh, it doesn't really, it's not really any better. Like it doesn't, you know, the, because of the spiral patterns. Um, it doesn't affect the speed of the, the disc. Like this disc, I got to about 10,000 uh, RPM. But what it does do, I think, is it strengthens the intensity of the magnetic field itself. Or conversely, it weakens the magnetic field based on the direction of spin. And, uh, you know, Tesla talks about this. And um, the really interesting thing that Tesla talks about is a generator involving uh, two uh, 
disc shaped magnets like the ones that I have here but um, stacked on top of each other with the disc um, spinning in between the two magnets and he described a, um, a generator that would be uh, extremely efficient when um, when spun and uh, you know used in that uh, way he basically says that the disc has to be the exact um, same diameter as the two magnets and that uh, the discs should be very close together and um, you know each face of uh, each disc um, should completely uh, cover the surface area of the copper disc and uh, yeah you know it's interesting because uh, Tesla describes something called a um, a current um, uh, what did he call it a uh, current amplifier or something like that um, current accumulator I think and uh, you know he doesn't quite say it but yet he's sort of like um, alluding to the fact that perhaps uh, some of these um, disc contraptions can actually accumulate current or in other words um, produce more energy than they consume and he references uh, someone in the literature you can research that yourself if you're curious yeah and then um, then in the 80s uh, you know Bruce De Palma came on the scene with his uh, what was it called? Was it an end machine or starburst machine or something like that? And um, Adam Trombley also uh, created a very similar device. He's in the movie uh, Thrive, if you've seen that. And their devices are uh, similar again. They're kind of based on, uh, you know, spinning um, magnets and spinning copper discs. Uh, you know, Bruce De Palma's is a, a spinning uh, electromagnet, which uh, produces, um, you know, over unity, is what he claimed. And, uh, you know, um, it's interesting because, you know, conventional generators use... Uh, I guess you could call it induction you know they have uh, basically break lines of force to create electricity and that's how um, conventional generators uh, work they you know that's that's how they um, move electrons within uh, copper conductors but the thing the interesting thing about a homopolar motor or, or sorry a, a unipolar generator is that um, it's operating in a different way I wouldn't call it um, induction like you know that the electrons um, or the copper disc isn't really uh, breaking lines of force well it is kind of but I don't know there, there it's a different process there's something uh, something different fundamentally different to the way that um, the electricity is generated and uh, you know for example um, in the vacuum of empty space you know in outer space uh, if you spun a copper disc over a magnet like this uh, there would be absolutely no resistance zero resistance and yet you're generating electricity whereas you know in a conventional um, generator you can't spin the uh, what is it the rotor um, without it slowing down you know there's resistance when you break those lines of field or those lines of force and in outer space you could see that very easily but you know this uh, this kind of generator doesn't uh, there's no resistance um, you know with the field you're, you're working with nature perfectly rather than against it and that is uh, I believe the secret to the, um, the over unity uh, claims that have been um, you know, uh, made in regards to a unipolar uh, generator, and you know there there are different um, ways you can do it. You know, De Palma's is one way, uh, Trombley's is another way, and uh, and Tesla's is uh, you know 
perhaps another way and, and I'm sure there are other ways that you can do it too but it's all based on the fun or the basic principle of uh, working with the magnetic field rather than against it to create uh, electricity working with nature rather than against it you know nature is the ultimate teacher and when we work within its uh, energies we are afforded a certain um, extra boost of energy you know you uh, you draw upon what is already pre-existent and it is um, you know kind of uh, a resonant effect happens in you know where your energies are brought up and there's an amplification and you know the ultimate uh, or at least um, who was it uh, Timothy Thrapp uh, talks about um, tuning to the dominant or the dominant energy field so you know there are there are other forms of energy that you can tune to tune your devices to um, you know Tesla uh, Tesla built a device that could tune to the center of our galaxy uh, it was called like um, a time wave zero or no a zero zero wave reference or something like that I forget the, the name Albila talks about that but you know he he built a device uh, using uh, gyroscopes and stuff that could actually tune into the resonant frequency um, emitted from the center of our galaxy and thereby create um, very sophisticated time uh, devices you know clocks and things which supposedly I think the Navy still uses as the basis of uh, the global um, time frame you know the, the atomic clocks as they call it uh, you know actually has another um, another uh, source another basis to it but anyways uh, that's it for now uh, thanks for watching